What a great morning, huh, Pips? What do you say? Fancy an egg? Maybe she cook outside. Sunny day like this, might as well enjoy it, right? So I have this big piece of birch here. And this is gonna be my, um, my eating table inside the tippy. What I'm doing now is I'm removing the the main bark and the inner bark otherwise it won't dry properly this is still green if I don't remove the bark what's gonna happen is that it's gonna rot really uh, really fast This piece is quite cool, it has a little hole here and a bit of rot. You can see where the trees start being eaten from outside towards the inside. I'm gonna try it, yeah, you see? It goes right through. I'm gonna try and use this for something. A couple of dirt balls in here. There are these spheres of dirt. Basically, consumed tree uh, it's no wonder the tree fell you can really see the rut here and in other sections of trunk is quite big but it's gonna make a cool something <laughs> those wondering how I'm recharging my batteries my iPad and, and so on I am mainly doing it with the solar panel and then once a week when I pop by the house I recharge everything also Okay, now it's time to build a sawhorse. It's gonna be this sunny and beautiful forever. Well, it's always gonna be beautiful, but it's gonna snow. And then we need wood, lots of it. I'm gonna make another one. Here we go. We have a work a sawhorse. Another important tool that I need to make is a baton. Any stick will do for me, like this one. But uh, I want something nicer with a better grip and heavier at the front.
Oh, it's good enough for me. I have big hands, big. <laughs> I have big hands, and as you can see, I have a full grip like that. And it's a weapon also. You can whack this, you whack this on a rabbit's head or some funky person that decides to come here in the middle of the night, uninvited. Whack. <laughs> anyway. So I'm just twisting it and forcing it in one millimeter at a time. And the key to this is just patience and persistence. And there we go, it's coming out. And voila. This is where I chopped the wood. That's my sawhorse. Here's some wood and some tools. Now pretty much I have all my wood processing area set up. I need to make a workbench slash table for myself over there and a kitchen. But whatever I need to process wood is already here. Good. Some more, board, some more boards, <laughs> some more birds leaving. More birds leaving to the south. Cold coming, Peps. The cold is coming. Are you ready for it? You always ready. I have a little piece of old leather here from a boot. And what I'm doing is uh, I'm doing some pull ups for zippers. Uh, the zippers in the tippy, they didn't come with any, well, they're just, I'm going to show you in a second. Um, they just come by itself, they don't have any cordage to it. But in the winter, when it gets minus, I'm going to have gloves a lot of the time, and it's, it's kind of hard to just pick on a, on a little zipper thing. So I'm going to make a very long, thong-like zipper grabber slash whatever. <laughs> so I've done a bunch of these already. I'm just going to show you how I'm doing this. In case you're interested, just very simple. I measure my hand with a glove. It would be about like this to grab it. So about this height now. Just cut it like that. I want it nice and big, so it becomes very easy to to grab it with gloves uh, when you're in a rush. Now what I'm gonna do is, whoops, I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna make just one tiny cut here in the middle, along, like so. But this is pretty simple, you see, now there's a hole. What I do is I pull this through the zipper and I loop it like so, I'm gonna show you. Okay, here's one that it's already done. And I've put, I've put this, uh, these little thongs all over it. Whenever there's any zippers in the tippy, I have one of these now. Anyway, I put it through this hole, like that. Pull it out like so. Then this part goes through the, through the hole. Pull it. And that's it. There you go. Now you can see the difference is quite big. A lot easier than if I had to, with big thick gloves, try and grab this tiny little thing. And since it's leather, it's gonna last for a really long time and it looks really good, at least to me. I really enjoy this leather piece. I got a bunch of um, tools here that need some covers, especially with the high humidity that I get here. Otherwise they're gonna get pretty rusty. They're gonna end up looking like this one. But for now, I'm just gonna put them on a wool sock. So whatever moisture there is, it will be wicked away from it, from the tool, I mean. It's a makeshift solution. I wanna make something in leather. 
and I will do so, but for now, till I make it, I think this uh, this will help. So I'm putting all my, my wood tools. The, the kind of cover I want to make is like this one, like I did for my crooked knife. This is leather. It's just sewn in. It comes off like so. And goes in like that. It keeps it from getting rusty. around this time is read I read a little bit because you know there's only so much stuff that you can do here before you get bored I mean during the day you're pretty busy and once I start painting that's gonna help also with the boredom factor right now there's no boredom there's so many things to be done but in case I do get bored I brought myself a couple of books so, what kind of books did I bring? I bought Bushcraft 101 by Dave Canterbury. A field guide to the art of wilderness survival. I also brought his latest book, which right now I can't find. Oh no, it is, it's here. Advanced Bushcraft, also by Dave Canterbury. So I got these two here. The third book I brought is Bushcraft, Outdoor Skills and Wilderness Survival, Moore's Kohansky. He's from the North Woods of Canada. So he's also in the Boro Forest. So this is great for me because I'm also in the Boro Forest, but in Sweden. The Great Ray Mears, Essential Bushcraft. Very good also. It's all good reading especially if you're doing something like this uh, even though I know a lot of this stuff you know you forget things and you know you're always learning and I love learning it's a lot of fun to just you know at this time of, of the day to just you know see what I'm what can I do tomorrow you know let me learn something new and that's what these books are for whenever I have a problem or a situation here in the tippy this is my rescue <laughs> all I need is here Navigation. This is for my trip up north. We'll see if that's going to happen or not. I have to get the money together. But meanwhile, I'm learning. You know, I'm, I'm like honing my uh, navigation skills. Not only just by reading, but you know, putting it out in the field, practicing with uh, with patches when I go for walks. I'm using this. And I also have The Prophet by Khalil Gibran, one of my favorite books. It's just uh, very inspiring. And also I have another favorite book by Paulo Coelho, The Alchemist. And I also have another one by him. Where is it? It's somewhere here. Which is actually my favorite book by him. Which is called The Pilgrimage. It's about the road to Santiago, which I, I walked. Uh, 800 kilometers or so back in 2005 so this is my reading material and that keeps me entertained until I fall asleep other things that I have here are maps from the the north where I'm gonna walk I want to paint these mountains and I sit here and I'm, you know, planning routes, you know, basically studying the maps and deciding which way to go when I get there. Digital stuff, all I have is my iPad. You know, the connection is really, really bad. But I got a couple of books here also. A bit of music, but I don't listen to much music in here. I keep an eye on the weather. In case there's storms and rain and whatever, whatnot, that helps me out. That's his favorite pastime. Right, Pips? He just wanna play ball. 
Play with me. I'm bored. Come on. Throw the ball. Throw the ball. Let's have a look at the sunset. Oh wow. That's gonna be nice. I'm gonna play a little. Get the monster. I think this is a nice vantage point to paint sunsets. Okay, there's a lot of bush. I don't have to paint the bush, I can just paint the clouds. That'd be nice. I don't know what you think, but I'm also thinking like, you know, still life painting? I'm thinking of painting objects that are here, like axes, you know, and fires, and the camp, things like that. Instead of painting flowers and apples, you know? I'll, I'll paint what I really love and what I'm doing here. But that could be cool. Come on, lost us. <laughs> That's going. Just gonna show you something. That is a, a sign of bad combustion. I need to open the, the air because what you want is a fire with no smoke because all of that is creating a lot of creosote up in the chimney. Well, I mean, actually all the way through the chimney, which can cause chimney fire. Now, if I open the vent over here, let more air in instead of suffocating the fire, there'll be more flames and that will pretty much burn all the smoke out. And then we should have less smoke in a little bit. If that doesn't work, it means that the wood is pretty wet. And then that <laughs> there's not much to do about that. You just gotta play with it. any of these shavings here all of this goes into a bucket to dry out and I use it for the fire days like this are awesome not too cold clear sky few clouds then it's good to hang out outside you can hang out here under the hammock when it's pouring down with rain I'm gonna film one of those days and you're gonna see, I mean, then you're pretty confined. But it's good to have this area at least. Crooked foot. <laughs> nice and cozy. Usually we have this light on, make it cozy like so with a with an oil lamp. But when I'm filming, I usually put the three night TH10 on. I get some extra light. Otherwise, uh, the whole footage becomes very grainy, as you probably have noticed. I'm gonna read a little, and I shall see you later. trying to answer your questions and all this time my page still has not loaded so let's see how long this takes okay finally so I'm gonna check 
the comment section of some of the videos and see if we got some questions. You wanna answer some questions, boy? Maybe we should make a fire, it's getting cold. Okay, got one question by uh, Walter Kolb. Which water filter do you use? Okay, Walter, um, I usually use a Milbank bag. It's an old uh, British Army issue. Well, not mine, mine is a copy, but that's what a Milbank bag is. And uh, I have some videos that you probably, well, you'll probably be able to see me using it soon enough. I'll try and film that. Alberto, Alberto Garcia. Garcia. How many days are you in the forest? Well, judging by the, the poll where I've been marking the days, I've been give or take something like 28 days or so. Mine was four days that I went home to edit videos. If you want to dig, dig around the tippy. Like that you make a little a little path for the water to fall through. Yeah, you can do, dig a trench. It's a good idea, Pep. It's good. Okay, more questions. A lot of comments are people just supporting, showing their support, and uh, saying how much they enjoy the series. And I appreciate all of those comments. Thank you so much. Susie Q here. She says uh, the interactiveness is very fun. Camp looks great, amazing job on safety with Fell in the Dead Tree. Perhaps while the new upload is rendering, hop onto Amazon Prime and get yourself some glow in the dark duct tape. I bought a bunch of it for four wheeling adventures. Best invention ever. Trip lines outside, nighttime illumination. You being the gear ahead that you are, you'll find a multitude of uses for it. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, I think it's a great idea. But uh, I don't know if I want my camp looking like a rave site. But anyway, it is a good idea. I'll think about it. Thanks, Susie. Um, Colin Zatkowski. I'm sorry, I'm murdering your name. He asks, are you from Sweden? Your English is outstanding. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not from Sweden. I was born in Portugal. Mike Socorro, Socorro, Socorro. You look like you're having a great time out there. My question is, when it snows and you have the fire going, what about the melting snow? Will it drain into your camp? Be safe out there. <laughs> that is a good question and I'm pretty sure I'll find out. <laughs> well, I can't really answer because I haven't had snow yet. But uh, yeah, I would say that I'll probably have to to dig a ditch around the tippy, maybe, maybe not. So far it has rained like a lot, like really strong rain, even the sideways type of rain. And the inside of the tippy has been completely dry. The only part that doesn't, doesn't get really dry, and I don't think that's because of the rain, is right underneath some of the, the floor tarps that I have. And I think that's just the humidity that is trapped there. But usually I lift them up and just with the fire within half an hour, it just, it dries out. So it's been okay. So yeah, I don't know about the snow. I guess <laughs> I guess we will find out, huh? More questions. Shed's channel. Loving the Tippy series, mate. It's from Australia. But I can't believe you didn't take a didgeridoo with you. I never go camping without mine. It is as important to me as fire. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, Shed's. The didgeridoo, as you probably know, is a, a very, you know, it's, it's quite fragile. You're talking about a piece of long wood that it's about a meter, 70 centimeters, completely hollowed out by termites with thin walls. The problem is this, Shaz. As you probably know, wood is very sensitive to like brutal changes in temperature. And if I bring the didgeridoo here, I can for a day. But living in my tipi day after day with me means that during the day it's going to be anywhere from like 0 to minus 20. And when I come in in the evening and I 
put the fire up to 30 degrees Celsius or 25 degrees Celsius, it's hard to, to control the temperature. That's a huge, huge difference in temperature and it's gonna cause a lot of stress on the wood from all the humidity that it has and suddenly with the fire, it's completely dry in there. And I would give it maybe a week and the didgeridoo would just explode in two pieces. I think it would just crack. Since I only have one didgeridoo, I don't really wanna risk it, you know? It's too brutal, the change in temperatures in there. I mean, I could live it outside, but you know, frost is also not good. So maybe I'll build, I'll build one just for, for the series. Something that I don't mind if it breaks. Maybe I'll carve one out. But yeah, that's, that's why, you know, it's okay for you in Australia to take your didgeridoo with you because it, I don't think you have that much fluctuations, at least not in a space of half an hour. Of having minus 20 and suddenly plus 30 inside your your tent but here that's that's what's gonna happen but anyway I understand you know I would like to bring my ditch too I would like to bring my guitar also I know most of the instruments that I didn't bring like guitar didgeridoo mandolin all the reason why I didn't bring is because of that right Kigawa man I think that's how you say this name Kigawa man hello Kigawa man I love this. Can you make an hour of this for the next episodes rather than half an hour? I could, but there's only so much I can film here for now, you know? Right now, I'm still setting up little pieces and fine tuning the camp, believe it or not. But mostly what I'm doing is chopping wood. You know, I'm building a, behind this, you can't see it from this angle, but I'm building a, a wood shed. And I'm just gathering wood like crazy for the winter. So there's not much to film right now. When, when I have a lot of material, sure, I'll try and stretch to an hour. Uh, otherwise, like this past episode, it's only 25 minutes. And the reason why is because it was just repeat, you know? There's only so much uh, shots of me waking up, going to sleep, cooking, chopping wood that I can put in one, one episode or in each episode without, you know, me getting bored <laughs> of actually looking at it when I'm editing. So I wanna keep things interesting, so I'm gonna keep them short if I don't have a lot of material, footage, I mean, uh, and I'm gonna keep them as long as possible when there's something interesting to show. Eric your Jonasson. Jonasson? Sounds like a Swedish name, Jonasson. Hey, awesome vid, as always. Don't know if I miss it or not, but do you have some sort of fire alarm in there? Eric. Yes, Eric, I do have a carbon monoxide alarm and a smoke detector because uh, it's a silent killer. I've, you know, I have fallen asleep twice when I wasn't supposed to. I usually like to, to get the fire completely extinguished before I turn into bed. But sometimes you just doze off because you're reading a book or whatever. And twice already the alarm went off. You know, nothing serious, but just went beep if it starts you know, detecting any carbon monoxide will give you just a beep or two. And if you're really in danger, it will give a continuous, very loud beep. And I'll show you that in a video soon. So yeah, it's a lifesaver. You have to be very careful. And that's why I got it. And I don't want to freak people out. Uh, when it, the alarm went off, it's because it detected traces of carbon monoxide. It's not because of the tent or, sorry, it's not because the tip was full and I was about to die. Not at all. It's just, it's kind of a, it's an alert for you to like open the, the ventilation a little more, you know? Open the door or whatever. Yeah, good question. Um, uh, Steve Greenwood, he mentioned here because I was talking about building a lookout post. And thank you for the link, Steve. You can see you have, uh, you have posted a link here. I'll, I'll check it out. Um, Sherry Iparaguire. Uh, you probably already know this, but if you sprinkle just a little bit of salt on the stove top or pan before laying your bread on the toast, it won't stick on the stove. It will just float on the salt. You look like you're having so much fun. Yes, I am. Thank you for sharing adventures with us, Sherry. Well, Sherry, thank you so much. I had no idea you could do that. I am far from knowing everything. That's one of the reasons why I'm doing this, is to put myself to the test and learn as much as possible. Anyway, this is the idea. This is like our little bushcraft school. And 
and that's what the series is all about is going to be uh, pretty much me painting and learning everything I can from uh, you know being in a bush and having fun so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode it's time for us to make a fire because it's freaking freezing right boy and what do you guys think maybe I should make a, a solid roof up here I kind of like this just moving around but when the snow comes even though I can just you know pluck it out I don't know will it hold I'm trying to build everything I can before the snow comes because when the snow comes it's gonna be obviously a lot harder to do so I guess we'll see. All right, ladies, guys. Cheers.